what constitutes decent follow through after yesterday today? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm still reacting to this, the uh, opening song, Carl. That was perfect. <laughs> yeah, um, White, White Belt's not reassuring. We apologize for that. <laughs> um, listen, I mean, look, yesterday was an unrealistic rally. I, I think we would all agree on that. And I think the machines were at work again. But um, what we expect to see is continued volatility as we move into the new year, waiting for some clarity on the Fed, but all the while nibbling away at some really attractive valuations. So I, I would expect to continue to see these kinds of thousand point moves, 800 point moves in one day. And, and it, through the end of the year, when, when the liquidity returns, then we'll see some normalcy, I think, to trading. Brian, how much of this is the machines? Well, uh, it's really hard to tell. I mean, I would like to think that a lot of it over the last couple of weeks has been more driven by some of the algorithmic trading. What we've been seeing, and I think that this has been reaffirmed by data from the Investment Company Institute, is that with a lot of retail investors, they began doing tax loss harvesting at the beginning of December, uh, almost sort of doing that type of harvesting somewhat mechanically, selling into uh, a market that was already softening. And we haven't really seen the buyers uh, stepping back into the market with any sort of enthusiasm here. So it seems like things have been very much biased towards more selling and perhaps a little bit more algorithmically trying to rebalance risk in portfolios. Uh, and uh, one of our portfolio managers described it as it seems like there's a bit of a buyer strike and that's not likely to change until we do get into the new year. Uh, so I, I do agree with Nancy saying that um, you know, we might have a few more days here where expect you know, more than trip, you know, these triple digit moves in the Dow. Uh, yesterday was a historic move up keeping in mind that it was from a much higher base than previous times. So you have to look at these things in percentage terms and not just absolute point terms. But, uh, you know, the VIX didn't really drop below 30 despite the massive move up in the equity market. So that suggests to me that maybe that was a bit of a flash in the pan and we should expect a little bit of give back, hopefully not a complete give back, though. So, Brian, just to dig into that a, a little bit more, what would you be looking for to actually see capitulation in this market to actually see a rebound that is more sustainable? Well, you know, when people were talking about capitulation about, let's say, two weeks ago, a lot of the narrative was around watching the VIX get above 30 and we've gotten there so perhaps you know with the retail outflows out of uh, mutual funds the VIX getting above 30 uh, some of the massive gaps down intraday volatility I'm hoping that those are signs of capitulation on the selling side now the question is is where's the bottom for that and bottoms can be pretty bumpy when you're trying to uh, look at historical comparisons let's say if it was in 82 where you had almost almost a 20% drop, 1998, where there is almost a 20% drop, 1990, where there was almost a 20% drop. You do have these like sawtooth patterns towards the bottom. So, um, you know, maybe if we can hold on to at least half of the gains that we got from yesterday, maybe that's a sign that we're beginning to get a little bit of traction. Uh, but uh, I'm uh, it's basically just trying to fasten my seatbelt and strap in for the ride. All right, so if you're a person who uh, feels that motion sickness when the volatility's got you going back and forth and upside down, if, Nancy, the journal article about automated trading and herd-like behavior on Wall Street got your attention, maybe people would be looking to someone like you for some advice. You just said you think that there's real value out there. Where do you see it? Yep, thank you, Kenneth. So we, we have been, um, we had positioned ourselves in the last few weeks to an overweight and consumer discretionary. So we think the consumer, despite today's confidence numbers, moderating modestly, we think the consumer's in great shape. Confid those confidence numbers, though lower, are still spectacular. Um, we've also been uh, overweight in, in healthcare, and we've actually been forced to trim a number of those holdings due to valuation. And we've put some of that money back to work in old technology and in some of the industrial names uh, and, and are looking for opportunities uh, in individual holdings that, that just stand out, like a Morgan Stanley that's cheap enough for us now and hasn't been for the last five years. So, you know, Apple at, at 11 times earnings, uh, Federal Express at 9 to 10 times earnings. These are great companies, stocks you can own for a lifetime, and th this is an opportunity to accumulate at much lower levels. Right. So we've, after we tax loss harvested, we began going back in and picking away at some new names.
Okay, so FedEx, though, are you not concerned at all that they're, they're saying that they have slowing shipping volume, say, in Europe? Yeah, I mean, but we but we knew Europe was slowing, and um, I think that what it, what we're assuming, and we could be wrong, is that we'll begin to see a, some pickup in China, in some of the emerging markets, and in Europe, um, maybe due to fiscal policy stimulus as monetary policy continues to be difficult. Uh, that the Chinese have already been easing pretty significantly, and so we think that. Those, those, that slowdown also came, and I sat on the call, it also came with expanding margins and ground, uh, a slowdown but still positive growth. I, I think it was just like everything else in this market. The market was blindsided and management was pretty, pretty candid. So do I think this is a yeah, stock are. I want to own for the next three to five years? Absolutely. Brian, uh, I mean, pinning your hopes on Chinese stimulus, pinning <clears throat> your hopes on the Fed backing off, pinning your hopes on balance sheet uh, roll-off being trimmed. I mean, that's not reassuring bull market activity. Um, no, it's not. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I don't pin my hopes on those things uh, necessarily. I'm more looking at, as far as with clients, what is the specific goal that they're investing for. Uh, for the near term, I think that the way we're positioning portfolios is we were overweight growth for most of last year, and we began trimming that back to more of a core positioning in the United States. We were overweight U.S. versus uh, non-U.S., but with the recent sell-off, we began moving that more towards emerging markets and to non-U.S. equities. But if there were a couple themes that I would be looking for for a portfolio for the next year, it would really be looking for income and looking at industrials. I think industrials have gotten beaten up a little bit too much, as Nancy was saying. I, I think that the growth outlook is much more favorable than what's probably priced into the markets. Um, and then as far as on the income side, looking for, say, dividend growing uh, companies, those companies that pay a dividend but not necessarily trying to be a yield hog in this type of environment, looking more for those companies that have demonstrated an ability to sustainably grow those dividends. And that will be able to compound over time. So those are really the two big themes that we're looking at for 2019 is looking for sustainable income and then also uh, biasing more towards industrials that seem to be beaten up a little bit too much here given the growth outlook.